right, thanks for coming back. Uh, now we're being joined by... Uh, <laughs> Volodymyr Yermolenko, I'm sorry. So our yeah, all-time guest. Of Inter News with our special introductory segment who's going to give us and our media monitor segment the rundown of what's been going on this week in the media. Yeah, thanks, th th thanks a lot. Now I'd like to begin with the, the stories about Ukraine and there is a very interesting article in Financial Times, basically an editorial in Financial Times calling the Western countries to, uh, to pledge more funds to Ukrainian economy which is on the brink of, of a certain default and there is a call to provide 15 billion more US dollars to help the Ukrainian economy. Um, and, and it's interesting how we discuss it because the, there is a, there is a, there, there are opinions that uh, the, the Western countries are already helping too much, but at the same time we should understand that uh, Ukrainian, you, the, the the future of Ukraine, the future of stability of Ukraine is critical now to the European, uh, to the European security. Another interesting article in Le Monde about uh, the the new government and the interesting analysis of the new of the three foreigners in the new government which will uh, which will um, which will have the ministries of finance of economy and of, of health uh, uh, then there is an interesting also an important thing which I would like to draw your attention to is the issue of Crimean Tatars there is an article in Washington Post calling attention drawing attention to the deteriorating uh, situation of human rights with Crimean Tatars in the annexed Crimea there are kidnapping of people, there is uh, this, the concept of banned literature and the story in Washington Post provides the analysis, the, the story of a person who faced this challenge, to, uh, who faced these allegations of reading and, uh, and having the banned literature. Now, uh, an interesting, another interesting debate is going on in, in some of the Western media. There are two articles, one on, uh, or again in Financial Times and another in BBC, which I have an, an impression to, to be kind of a arguments, the pro-Russian arguments, and the article on BBC, which, which we will, which we, we quote here, is basically providing many arguments which are, uh, it seems to be the Russian arguments. Arguments, not even the pro-Russian arguments, the Russian arguments. So the argument is that uh, the association agreement between EU and Ukraine did not provide room for free trade area between Ukraine and Russia on the one hand and Ukraine and Europe on the other hand, which is false, which is not the case. The argument is that, you know, the Russian language is uh, kind of oppressed in Ukraine, which is again false. Um, another, another a few arguments also which are, which are coming mostly probably from Russian sources, and this is a worrying trend in some of the Western, Western media. Volodya, and this, uh, when you speak about these arguments, are they, how they are explained? Are they put as the facts? Well, yes, for example, the, there is an argument that, uh, you know, that the, the Western countries should have provided the, the, the possibility for Ukraine to have free trade areas with Russia and with the European Union at the same time, but this is exactly what was provided by the association agreement. But this is again the Russian argument that the association agreement contradicted the free trade area with, uh, with, uh, with the Russia and with the community of independent states. Now there are two articles uh, in German media covering and discussing the, uh, the Putin speech, the latest mm -hmm. Putin's address to Federal Assembly, and it's quite an interesting analysis. One is, well, both are made by Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, and uh, they're giving us an idea of Putin's major argument, which is provided now about the annex annexation of Crimea, which is basically the religious argument, saying that Russia had to annex Crimea because because of the sacred reasons, because of the religious reasons, because of uh, Prince Vladimir, which is, which is a key of prince actually, was baptized in Crimea. So it's kind of a theolization and... Uh, well, it was, it was quite slammed by historians because, I mean, Crimea as a part of Russia, it's more recent. It's certainly, you can make more historical links to Kiev with uh, Kiev and Rus and all of that than you can to Exactly, Crimea but directly. interesting when, for example, when Putin was, was talking about the annexation of Crimea on the day of annexation, he 
was providing mostly the security argument, saying, well, we're next Crimea because we don't want NATO to be in Crimea. Now this argument is uh, religious, saying, well, there is this... What's this idea of gathering the Russian lands almost? Yeah, well, and, and it's ridiculous because, I mean, uh, you, you cannot annex another territory j just by saying but that there, is, there was a prince 1,000 years ago who was baptizing it, you know? But what was the general response to his speech? I mean, it seemed like a lot of it was critical from Western media. Well, it was critical. So many media are saying that Putin was not as uh, self-convincing, not as convincing, not as energetic, which I personally did note. I think that he did have Putin a cough, was, huh? He did have a cough. So. Yeah, but Putin <laughs> was. I think he was typically okay for 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 you know he, this was his typical style. But the interesting thing is that basically how it it it, it already it sounds like you know a sacred something sacred which is mm. behind Russian politics. It seems that re religion is uh, more important now as an argument than uh, than politics. And then the final issue I would like to end with the with the final issue is a very interesting article published by. Um, by Mikhail Epstein, a Russian uh, and, and American and British intellectual, uh, uh, which is called Atsavkak Babku, from Sovok to Bobok, who is analyzing, who is trying to understand the psychology of Russian current politics, starting from Dostoevsky, and showing that basically he, he launched this concept of miraslobia and panphobia, meaning that the Russian, uh, already in the Russian political psychology is now a kind of a hatred against the world itself, not on against particular civilizations even, but against the world itself and, and analyzing these destructive, um, destructive traits of Russian political psychology. That's it. So thanks a lot.